Well, that is one ugly toaster. So no, it's not a toaster. It's a heat pump, a cold climate heat pump. And yes, that makes a difference. Hi, I'm your electric neighbor. And I wanna go over a year of ownership of one of these heat pumps and answer the question that we all have. Is it worth it? Can it save you some money? And I'll tell you if I think you should buy one of these uh, heat pumps and my answer might surprise you. So stick around to the end. So before I get into that, I'll give you a quick summary of what a heat pump is. If you're new to this, hopefully you've done some research so far and you know kind of the term heat pump and you're wondering what is that? Basically the heat pump is an outdoor piece of equipment that's gonna replace your air conditioner on a centrally ducted um, HVAC system. So you have a typical furnace, you know, you're running to one of your ACs outside to run air conditioner in the summertime. In the winter time, you're using natural gas, maybe you're using uh, heating oil to, to run that furnace. I was using natural gas. Uh, I still have that connected to my house, um, but the heat pump is replacing that outdoor unit. It runs pipes with coolant, uh, refrigerant to a, a coil inside your furnace. So here's a quick look at my setup inside. All right, so this is my 25 year old York Diamond 80, which is a mid uh, efficiency furnace. That's part of my heat pump system. It's a hybrid because you're using your furnace along with a heat pump. So what does that mean? Basically, I have your heat exchanger is still in here. It's the original one. It's got a few years left on it, according to my installer. And uh, I only plan on using that maybe once or twice a year on the coldest days as a backup source of heat. Just like when you have a central AC, this is called an A-coil, which is inside of this uh, part. This is the um, output of the air, uh, fan blows it up, distribution. And so when your heat pump is in the winter time, it's working in reverse, which the A-coil will actually produce heat through these pipes. And that's what's heating your home uh, through your centrally ducted unit. Now, one of my cons um, based on where mine is installed my old air conditioner was there, so that's where the new one was. Makes sense, right? And uh, it's installed on this high stand, uh, I guess because of snow, possible accumulation. They do uh, go on a defrost cycle and then they drip down water and so that can form into ice. So they should be at least somewhat off the ground if you're in a cold climate. Um, but also the compressor can get kind of noisy. Don't really hear it inside, but I did have a, a neighbor uh, complain who was across the street uh, indicating they could hear it from their house. And um, that unit did get replaced. And so here's a video of what it kind of sounds like when it goes into that uh, louder compressor mode. This is the sound of it running. After about 20 minutes in near freezing temperatures. The compressor will get uh, quite a bit louder than that especially on a defrost cycle. All right, so that's my furnace setup inside. I'm still using my old furnace because everything was still functioning fine on it. If you are gonna have a rebate around that's gonna pay for half of a, a furnace upgrade for you, by all means, go that route. Um, I didn't have that available at the time of when I bought my heat pump. And so that's why I kept my old furnace because I still get the new A coil that's matched to your outdoor unit and uh, the blower I upgraded separately after the fact from I think they're the old P PCM something like that uh, sorry PSC motor to an ECM it basically uses a, a lot less uh, energy to to have the blower fan going constantly and then when the unit kicks on it slowly ramps up to kind of match the speed of the inverter inside of my heat pump unit so you don't have to do all that. Your your installers will take care of that. So, so forget the last 20 seconds. What we want to go through, what I think you guys all want to know is the cost, right? So I'm going to show you my numbers here. Okay, so I'm going to put this up on screen, but at the same time, I'm going to have to tell you the numbers individually because uh, I'm not that high tech when it comes to YouTube. Sorry about that. They're not paying me, uh, you know, too many millions to do this. So um, you get what you get. I'll go through the numbers. So in January of last year was my highest kilowatt hour usage. It went all the way up to 690 kilowatts in a month, kilowatt hours, sorry. February 690, 674, March 614. 
But then by April, when I'm not using the heat as much, it dropped all the way down to 234, again, kilowatt hours. In May, only 41 kilowatt hours. Now, June is uh, when my unit broke, so I only used 11 kilowatt hours. I'll go over that after July. We're really uh, turning on the air conditioning a lot with the unit. It, w it used 121 kilowatt hours. August, only 46. We had a milder August, actually, in uh, southern Ontario. September, 44. October, 132. November, 461. And December, 553. What does that add up to? So about 3,600 kilowatt hours for the year that the heat pump unit alone uh, used. Um, so what did that cost? I have something called an Emporia hooked up to my uh, panel so I can actually monitor exactly how much I'm using for that uh, breaker. And um, in January, the highest month was $70. I won't tell you June because that's when it broke. It said it used $1.13. Uh, but in July, our hottest month used $12 worth of electricity over the entire month. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. August, $4.73. September, $4.53. In those colder months, like I said, the most was $70, 69 in February, to a grand total of the year for about $368. This is Canadian money, all right? So uh, you can convert it if you want. Now, how do I calculate my savings? Well, I got to look at my gas bill uh, from the previous uh, couple of years ago. And uh, during those higher winter months, I'm, I'm using about $150 worth of gas for, let's see, at least three of those months. Uh, $100 when I'm starting to come down a bit, $80 like in April and then in the fall, October and a uh, tiny bit in May. I took out the, you know, about 20, 25 bucks a month, maybe that my uh, hot, older hot water tank was using. And so I came out with an average of around 600 for a year in gas on my old uh, mid efficiency furnace. $600 a year for that. Where did, now I got to add electricity of what my air conditioner was using, the central AC, because your heat pump replaces that as well. And uh, I came up with 400 for the year prior to that. Uh, so that's around a thousand bucks a year. So thousand minus three sixty-eight. We're looking at around savings of four hundred and fifty a year. Um, so overall, that's pretty good savings. You count that over ten years, and uh, that more than than pays for the cost of the heat pump because I got a, a rebate where I was uh, that covered about half the cost of the heat pump. It was a f about four thousand installed Canadian. Um, so not too bad. Okay, so I said it broke in my thumbnail there, and what happened, right? Uh, well, the compressor got noisier and noisier on my original unit, and um, it's rebranded as a Napoleon unit. I know it's a called a Gri Flex. It's a Chinese-made um, outdoor unit. Uh, lots of companies get these units in and then rebrand them with their own, even though on the website for Napoleon it said made in Canada. I learned after the fact that um, basically they're, they're putting their own sticker on it in the factory and maybe tweaking a few things uh, and bench testing it before sending it out to customers. That's fine, why did I go with that? That's what my installers used, they're reputable installers. They use under the Napoleon name in Canada, it gave me a 10 year warranty. So anything breaks on it, they're gonna replace it with the newest unit at the time. The compressor got louder and louder, the tech came out on mine uh, tried to adjust it. He actually replaced the compressor. They ordered a new one, got that approved through the manufacturer and the, the new one, uh, something in it quit. And uh, so they rushed me a new, uh, brand new unit. Now the, the new unit is a little bit different. It uh, is has a SEER 2 rating. And when you actually look at the efficiency numbers, they're actually slightly lower than the original one, which was a SEER 1. A lot of the, the tech people watching this or, or commenting on the board can give you way better information than I can. But basically from my understanding, SEER 2 is basically like, you know, EPA standards on, on your car, on, on miles per gallon. So it, it's the newest way of measuring the efficiency of these units. So even though my, my numbers look a little bit lower on the SEER 2, yeah, it's actually a little bit more efficient than the old unit uh, because it's been rated by the newest standard. So again, you don't really have to know that. What you wanna do when you're checking with your manufacturer is just know that it's a cold climate capable unit. 
because you want something that's going to work well below zero. In Canada, mine will work fine, minus 15, even up to minus 18. It's still blowing hot air throughout my house and, and working well. Uh, Fahrenheit, I, I think Fahrenheit and Celsius balance out somewhere around minus 22 or something like that. So well below freezing mark. Before I give my uh, recommendation on if you should get one or not, I just wanna give you a, a quick summary of what it's been like for operation. So I, I also got a upgraded thermostat with the unit and um, it allows me to adjust if you want the gas furnace to come on at all or, or not at all. Uh, you can have what's called the set point so that, or sorry, switch over point. So your, uh, let's say it gets down to minus five Celsius, uh, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, uh, it'll switch over to gas if, if you think it's more cost savings at that point for you. So check with your manufacturer what type of thermostat they're gonna install with your unit to see how much you can adjust uh, on it. Is it uh, user friendly? Is it is it really complicated? Does it have a manual even online or in, in hard copy that you can reference when you wanna set this thing up? All right, if you've watched this far, thanks. I, I appreciate uh, you supporting the channel and uh, looking at whether these, these things are worth it or not. For me, I'm not gonna tell a, a broad spectrum, yes, of course, upgrade to a heat pump right now. Uh, it, it really is an individual decision based on costs, but also on your current equipment. That would be my number one thing to consider. How old is your current uh, central air conditioning unit? Mine was 18 years old. My furnace is, is like 22 years old. So those were factors in whether I wanted to replace it or not. Because my, my blower fan and the actual unit was still fine, yes, my heat exchanger is, is towards the end of its life, but I, I'm planning on, because the heat pump works in most of our weather that we get here, it's hardly ever gonna be used. It's just kind of an emergency backup heat. But if you got a, a central AC unit five years ago, along with a newer furnace, you probably have no need to until the, the time comes for you to upgrade. Why would you make that decision, right? If you got a, a new car and it's only five years old, it's still running great. Why would you get one that's, you know, brand new if uh, you don't need to? Um, so, so that's kind of my recommendation. Have some common sense. Look at the rebates that are out there. They differ federally, locally, wherever you are. So you gotta take these all into consideration. Ask people around you who have one. Hey, who'd you go through? What manufacturer did you use? Look at the warranty. That's a big one in my case because you, I've already used it. And, um, and finally make that financial cost. You gotta know how much you're spending to know how much you, you're gonna save. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.